his smile is so precious. <laughs> yes, precious. And prepared. Why it takes him more muscles to smile than to frown. Contrary to what people may say, today Iqbal will tell you how he has realized that even God will not accept his excuses anymore. Iqbal will share his roadmap to smile in less than seven minutes. From the humorously speaking manual, Keep Them Laughing is the project titled My Precious Smile Iqbal. <laughs> Mr. Toastmaster, my fellow Toastmasters. I was fresh off the boat in Vancouver, Canada. I got on this bus. There was one empty seat. I wanted to sit on that seat, but there was a problem. It was next to a very beautiful woman. <laughs> now, you might wonder why it's a problem. It was a problem because I was coming from a culture where you don't sit beside a woman that you don't know. You're not related to. So that was a problem. But I had to sit on that seat, because now I was in Canada. I was headed to that seat with my tunnel vision, just focused on the seat. I got to sit there. With my worries and my legs trembling, that somebody's going to say something if I sit there. Somebody's going to frown upon it, or maybe the girl would not like it. Or she will get up and leave. So I'm focused and getting under that seat. I, I'm heading towards that seat, and suddenly this girl looks at me and smiles. I did not smile back. <laughs> because according to my culture, if you smile towards a girl, it was like hitting on a girl. <laughs> not to mention smile is harder for me anyways. I, I went on, I proceeded to sit on that seat. I sat there, and a couple of minutes later, I composed myself, and I realized nobody had any objections to me sitting beside a beautiful girl. Neither did she have any objection. But the only problem that occurred by that time was the fact that she smiled towards me, I never smiled back. So maybe I was a meanie. So that's what I started thinking about myself, that I was so mean that I did not smile back. So that's how my story started, of smiling and changing myself, changing my culture, changing my uh, habits. So sometimes I wonder why do I not smile? So I started looking backwards and see what really happened there. Growing up in the 80s, we used to watch this black and white TV. It used to run between 7 and 10 p.m. And during that time, there was one figure or one character that was always there uh, in the, on the TV. It was the president of the country. His name was Ziaul Haq. The president Zia was a general. He became a general by actually um, hanging an elected prime minister. So he became the president of the country. And he also discriminated or persecuted minorities, and of which I was one of them. Now, this president was always there on TV. The problem was he had the biggest smile you can ever imagine. He had big teeth, big white teeth, <laughs> very beautiful smile. But we all hated his smile. We all hated his smile. We just did not stand him at all. One day, President Zia was flying over a town uh, in Pakistan somewhere, and he thinks of a good idea, that if I drop a $100 bill, it'll make somebody's life happy today, somebody's life better today. But there was a general sitting next to him, and said, Mr. President, I have a better idea. Why don't you drop two $50 bills? It'll make life better for at least two families. But then there was another general sitting next to him. He wanted to out outrun him and do better than him. He said, <coughs> Mr. President, if you drop 10 $10 bills, It'll make life of at least 10 different families better. Right? He said, that's a great idea. I should drop these 10, $10 bills. He's just about to drop them, and there was a sergeant who was serving tea at the time and said, Mr. President, I have an even better idea. He said, what is your idea? He said, Mr. President, if you jump off this plane right now, the whole country will be happy. <laughs> <laughs> that was President Zia. And the irony is, in 1989, about August 17, he actually really died in a plane accident. That, that is true story. He died in an accident along with many generals, and U.S. ambassador was also on board. All of them died, and nobody could get to the accident site for, for a couple of days because it was so hot. And now they were looking for his body and couldn't find his body. 
And what they found eventually was, guess what? His teeth. <laughs> they found his teeth. And they ultimately ended up burying his teeth in a grave, in a ceremonial <laughs> funeral. And now that, that grave is known to be a tooth grave, and the intersection is called a tooth intersection. <laughs> That's how famous the teeth of Mr. President Zia was. I was looking at more reasons other than President Zia for me why I don't smile. <laughs> One day my son, 12 years old, he was pulling me from both cheeks and saying, Dad, this is how we smile. So he was showing me how to smile, because it takes so much effort for me to smile. Then it, I thought of a story of a boy. His name was Matt, Matt Downer. He couldn't smile. But one day he keeps, uh, comes crying to his mom and says, Mom, I, why do I not smile? And mom says, that's how God made you. To cut the story short, he was being called Matt Downer. He was not happy about his smile. And sometimes I think maybe God made me like that. It's so hard for me to smile. Although I think that way, but I cannot blame God, because I don't want to be like the preacher. This preacher, one day, his, his boat was sinking in the middle of an ocean. And there comes another boat that was passing by and says, Mr. Preacher, do you need any help? Preacher says, no, I think I'll be fine. The boat is capsizing, but I do have extra floating devices that I can use. A couple of hours pass, and this preacher, uh, the, the situation is getting even worse for his boat. And another boat passes by, and boats, uh, the captain screams out loud and says, Preacher, Mr. Preacher, do you need any help? And the preacher says, uh, no, I think I'll be fine. God will save me. <laughs> a few hours later, Mr. Preacher dies. He goes to heaven. And he asks God, God, that day I needed your help. And I was begging for your help. But you didn't come to help, uh, help me. And God responds back and says, you fool, I sent you two boats. <laughs> <laughs> my, Mr. Toastmaster and my fellow Toastmasters, I don't want to be in that situation that if I go to God and say, God, why did you make me like this, that it takes this much effort for me to smile, that my son has to pull both my cheeks. <laughs> I don't want to be saying that because God is going to answer me the same way. Because God will say, you fool, I gave you Toastmasters. <laughs> and all these fellow friend Toastmasters to learn, for you to learn to smile. I don't want to be that kind of fool. Thank you, Iqbal. Excellent as always.